Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Or maybe I should say, welcome to the new version of Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts 1.5.0. This version has a couple of new hulls, and we might be able to use some of them, depending on whether or not they're going to be available for this particular era. The situation is as follows. The week's challenge is fairly simple, but it will require you to design multiple ships. Or maybe not. You'll be engaging an enemy task force, and the objective is to simply sink all the enemy ships. That's really straightforward. But earning missions, or earning points, is done not by what you sink, but by what you leave behind. So if you do not bring a battleship or a battlecruiser, you will earn 12 points. Leaving a heavy cruiser in port is going to uh, earn you 6 points, a light cruiser is 3 points. So let's say I'm going to leave all light cruisers in port, that's an immediate 12 points. However... If you fail to sink the entire enemy task force, which, well, depending on how much you cut, is possible, you gain no points at all. So that means all enemy ships, um, and you might want to have some fast ships to chase them down if they try to run. This is something that the AI sometimes does. They will just run away. Bonus points. Multiply your points by 50% by not mounting any torpedoes on any of your ships and also not making use of incendiary HE shells or picric acid. So basically, uh, don't fire spam. And that's going to give you another 50 points, or 50% of points. The battle timer is the tiebreaker. You may play using a mod like the Naval Arms Race, or the DIP, which I think is the Dreadnoughts Improvement Project by uh, Brother Monroe. Right, so how am I going to play this? First, I want to see um, if Austria-Hungary gets that new hull, because it is the... Uh, the De Ruiter class. Well, that's one of the hulls that they're getting. It's a Dutch heavy cruiser hull. And I'm, of course, very interested in seeing that. As for the enemy, I think in this era it doesn't really matter that much. Let's just, I don't know, give it China. As for the battle conditions, I am supposed to set these to clear and day. Okay, how much do I want to leave behind? That is going to be... Oh, sorry, I'm supposed to be 1916 and they're more advanced. They're 1920. Fun. Now, what do I want to leave? I think I can get some decently fast battle cruisers, decently fast battleships, and against a threat level like this, if you bring big guns and generally elongated barrels, you can well, pretty easily punch through these ships, of course, depending on how the AI builds them. And it is the brand new day of 1.5.0. Uh, which supposedly comes with improved ship designs. I will believe that when I see it. Now I'm going to forego the heavies, the lights. Um, I'm going to go with two battleships. There, straightforward. So if this works, I get at least 12 points per battle cruiser. So that's 24 points immediately. Um, I leave behind another two heavy cruisers, which is another 12 points. So I'm looking at 36. And I'm leaving another 12 points behind in the form of all my light cruisers. That's 48. Now I first have to, you know, win. There's a little something like that. Um, we're going to experiment with Dreadnoughts. Let's see, I'm looking for a lot of resistance. 75, 70, 90. Stability. Yeah. This thing's probably made for a better firing platform. Like 75 stability... Versus 63. It's not very stable, but it is. It is very resistant to taking fire. What's that hull look like? Ah, okay. And the other one? Nope. I'm using this one. Reason being, I want a nice flat deck to work with. I'm going to supersize this ship. I'm going to say range is not that important. Um, speed could be a factor if they try to run away. It's very annoying when they do. But it's something that you do have to keep in mind. Let's go for gear turbines. Let's give them oil. I'm surprised that's even around in 1916. Let's give them slightly better steering. I am not intending to slow this thing down because it'll take forever to speed back up. Armor. You know, this is basically the same thing as always. Um, there is a possibility that I'll take torpedoes, but I'd say not a major one. Just try and keep your eyes open. Secondary tower. I think this is a pretty straightforward challenge. I don't. I don't really see any massive 
caveats, any massive pitfalls, if you will. So it should be easy. Just blow up the enemy. There's no concealed parts by the looks of it. Um, acoustics, give me Hydro 2. This could be... yeah, 3% gun aiming speed. Not really feeling it. Stereoscopic range finder, what sort of boosting do we get? 25 long range accuracy, I can work with that. Alright, center lines, we get Mark 3, we get Mark 3, and we get Mark 2. So 13 inch guns, it is. I think it's gonna be, you know, just ABXY. As for volume of fire, I'm expecting a range of 15 kilometers at the start, possibly closing to 10 in order to deal damage. 3 to 8, or 3 to 3.8, and that's 2.4 to 3. Okay, what if I mess with the barrel length? Then we're getting 4.3 to 5.7, and we're getting to 4.5. I'll take dual barrels. And judging by how this ship is laid out, I might be able to field five of them. Yeah, I can probably make that work. Uh, increase armor. Holy moly, how much can you get? What? Wow. That's a very well-protected ship. Extremely well. What's your reload? Oh, crap, I forgot about that. Um, that's... Zoomed in far enough. Electrical turrets. Me no. I'm not supposed to use picric acid. Okay, so it's gonna be TNT. We're gonna be using capitalistic twos. Increased armor, piercing composition, me barbettes. Um, I'm not likely to even use secondaries on this ship. I just wanna smack everybody around with these big guns. 40 seconds to reload. Should be doable. I'm surprised that even a ship like this, 1916, is going to cost you just shy of a billion dollars. Like, they don't make them cheap. Yeah, that can spin, that can spin. I just used five or four turrets, why not? And give this thing massive amounts of armor. However, however, I am... Possibly going to do this engagement at range. Now, I have a lot of shell velocity, muzzle velocity, so my shells are not that likely to be able to plunge through the deck. But, it is possible... Oh, whoops. I'm supposed to be a bit longer. Uh, I really have 57 seconds, that's fine. That's fine. 15,000 meter range, 4% accuracy, 10,000 meter range, up to 9.4. Now we're getting somewhere. Um, capability of plunging fire is about... 0.8 inches, and that's with almost the perfect shell. If you're going to be going with standard, you really don't get a whole lot more pen. So if my armor is able to withstand like two and a half inches of armor, or well, an impact of two and a half inches, maybe four inches, that should be sufficient. So let's say main deck armor is six, six, and six. And then we're going to change these back. Um, the rest of it, like Mm, that's a bit much. Let's uh, let's wind this down a bit. What's my modifier set to? General, one forty-two, I think, is about it. And with that, the ship can pen twenty-one inches of armor at s <laughs> at seven and a half kilometer range. Okay, so that means this thing is going to be pretty capable of defeating its own armor, but only at very short ranges. And that is if you get a flat broadside, which is not that likely. Let's give it 18 inch main belt and then see if I can upgrade the superstructure armor a bit more. Um, let's give the conning tower like 15 inches. And I think the barbettes and side armor of the turrets can also use a bit of work. Top armor, uh, six. And we're going to Salvage some armor here. Where else can I save? Triple hull bottom is a bit ridiculous. Let's go for this. It, however, it is resistance. That is fairly valuable. Now I'm going to shift some things around on this ship just to get rid of that four weight offset. There. 0.3% aft weight offset. The ship is almost completely filled out weight-wise. And I think she's ready to go. 
An Orcs 3 would help. Yeah, this would help. Gives you, um, among other things, better repair capability, as well as water pumping. So if the thing does take a hit, this ought to be able to keep it alive. There. All right, the Arpat. Send her out to the mission. Okay, let's scope out the opposition. What are we fighting today? And are these indeed improved designs? That's an interesting design. I've never seen this particular hull. Good case mate, God, what the hell? How many is that? 22 three inchers and another 24, hold on. Another 24 one inchers? Like, did you shrink? No, two inches. Uh, the real deal, however, is the three by three 15 inches, which strike me as slightly shorter barrels, but I could be mistaken there. What sort of firing range do you get? 17 clicks. Yeah, that's cute. I can probably outshoot you. <laughs> by a lot. I can outshoot you by about 20 kilometers. <laughs> let's, do, let's go do that. Um, standard formation, please. And fire, armor piercing only. The challenge is going to be, I am not really that capable of dealing a whole lot of damage to their deck. Because my shells are so fast. That's kind of the payoff that you get in order to get these things to be very accurate. Because at this range, which is about 15, my capability to pen a deck is like 0.8 inches. So, yeah, that's not very special. Full salvos. I know that the tiebreaker is the time taken, but I don't really want to be taking fire from the whole fleet. That would be a bit annoying. Okay, so that's the battleship. There's the battle cruiser. 12.4 inch guns, but they look really big on this hull. I'm going to class this as a B threat. This is not a main threat. Heavy cruisers. You guys went with singles and a bunch of... T one 10 incher. Yeah, big deal. Um, the light cruisers. Yeah. Like D tier. I don't care about those at all. At all. Are we even getting any kind of hits? We are not. Okay. Now, I did mention that these things are low threat. But... They do have torpedoes, which kind of ups their threat level. What I'm going to do is turn away, <clears throat> let my ships engage the light ships first, or the heavies in this case, which even at 12 kilometers, they should be able to pen, because I can pen 17 inches of armor, and good luck bringing a heavy cruiser that has that much armor. It's possible, but it's not that likely. The reason why I'm dealing with these smaller ships first is because I want to be able to then close the distance with the big ships, I don't think they can damage me. Yeah, not much. And I can definitely damage their ships. These, once they've been dispensed, can no longer throw torpedoes my way. And that means I can much safer close in. Ooh, more flooding. More flooding, more better. Um, this guy is coming in. 4% chance to pen at 10 kilometer range. I don't have them fully identified yet, so I cannot speak to what their pen level is. Eliminate this. Torps at 9 clicks. Torpedo launching vectors unknown, however. Oh, we sunk one. I don't know how well I'm capable of dodging torpedoes at 5 kilometer range. That's going to be a bit scary. Oh, but that'll uh, fix it right quick. It has no more torpedoes, but that might be because I just blew them up. Yeah, I just blew them up. Their torpedo range is 9 kilometers. I don't care about that. I'm well within range. Where is their launcher? Port and starboard. Okay, not a problem. <clears throat> not a problem. I'm not going to be facing torpedoes. Uh, the CLs are still getting identified. Was that a CA? Oh, we already sunk a heavy cruiser. Okay. And there's their last light. Gotcha. All right. Um, I think Shang-Chi might sink. Definitely will sink. 
Point four, gone. Second heavy cruiser, gone. Battleships have now been identified. Let's see what you get. Oh, they're fast. 28 knots. There's no outrunning this thing. As for bulkheads, many. It's a slight problem with their flooding capability, or their ability to fight flooding. They also have a weight offset of 100%. So, in the patch notes, it said improved capability of auto design. Yeah. I don't see it. <laughs> I just don't see it. Armor-wise, ooh, look at that juicy, juicy aft belt. 0.7. Zero on the superstructure. Oh, man. 11 inch. Wait, your four belt is heavier than your main belt? Would you like to run that by me? Because I don't understand the reasoning for that. Okay. Interesting ship. Let's, uh, let's put it that way. All right. <clears throat> Continue with the mission. This thing is potentially a problem, considering that it is fairly quickly going to be capable of getting those torpedoes out. Thankfully, she's flooding and thus slowing down. Sigismund has taken some damage. Yeah, kill it quickly. She's flooding very quickly now. Destroy torpedo. But that wasn't all of them. Oh, you got a lot of launchers there, friend. Had a lot of launchers. Okay. Uh, we're going to split the division. You're going to turn, and you're also going to turn. Which, yep, and that's why. Which means that I'll not be able to bring all the guns to bear. But I can live with that. And now the Yunnan is going to be in a lot of trouble. Fully broadside to a couple of pissed off battleships that just had to dodge, uh, dodge some of their torps. Go on. Here come the CLs. That's also side mounts, or there would be a single point. Two launchers per site. Alright. I can generally just ignore them. Okay. Um, oh crap, these BC or these BBs are getting fairly close. Switch fire to the battleship. These are about four clicks out. That's a bit of a problem. Now, the reason why I was trying to space out those turrets as far as I did is so they can turn around exactly like that. They can turn around without having to swing all the way over the ship, which gives me pretty quick ability to engage the enemy again. Now, at this point, I'm definitely vulnerable because I'm too close to the enemy. So Sigismund's going to have to try and turn a bit. Um, Arpat's also coming under fire and hurting. 70% chance to hit versus their 79, so we're very even. I think their rate of fire might be, ooh, slightly better, though. Decent damage. Destroyed a main gun. I destroyed their bow gun. Progress. Good damage. Uh, I'm going to do something a bit weird. I'm going to put the Sigismund on course towards the battleships. Reason being, I mitigate two threats. One, the torpedoes are going to have a very slim profile to target. And the same goes for the battleships. At the same time, I'm making my angle worse for the enemy. The ricochet angle is going up as I do this. So with this, I hope to minimize the threat against the ship. I just noticed that my game wasn't recording any audio. I'm not sure why. Ideally, by now, it should be. Apologies for the <clears throat> uh, lack of audio there. Not sure why. It might have had something to do with the update. Come on. Pretty good damage. What's my chance to pen them? 53. Their chance to pen me should be about 7. <laughs> yeah. This is why you blade yourself towards the enemy. Yes, I'm missing out on firepower. Uh, I'm probably going to be missing out on a whole ship. Because, unlike myself, they did not get the message that fire spam is frowned upon. Um, at least by... Uh, <laughs> I think it was you, Larry, who said the challenge. And my ship does have some some fiery issues. Oh, that was good damage. 
That was their stern. We're gonna need more than that. Stern turrets already coming to bear. Turn a bit. What's your chance to pen the Arpad? 29%. Don't like those CLs getting this close. But I'm already trying to turn out. We're kind of in a bit of a pickle here. There's more flooding. Oh, that's a lot of flooding. Look at that. There's five compartments in the stern. Bondi is going to have a bit of a problem trying to counteract that flooding. They do have many bulkheads. They do have spacious quarters, so crew loss really doesn't affect them that much. Yeah, you're in a not a great position to try and damage the other pod. If I was controlling the Geng Yao, I would have it engage the Sigismund with HE. Okay, now they're trying to reverse the play. Yeah. Switch fire. Ignore the lead battleship. Actually, not you, though. Sigismund is in a perfectly good position to engage that. I need you to increase speed. Also, um, I did complain in a previous video about the way that the ships were changing division based on the fact that they had taken damage. That has been fixed. Automatically change of the group leader has been disabled. Or at least you can disable it. Can you not put more fish into the sea? Thank you. Be great. Um, with this button, you can turn that on or off. Now in this case it doesn't do anything because they're not in a division. But sometimes you'll see that a ship just leaves the division or tries to fall back into the formation because it doesn't want to be a group leader anymore. It's too badly damaged and it goes, nope, uh, that honor is now going to go to somebody else. Which is a pretty good thing to do. The problem is, you don't really want to have that happen in the middle of a battle. Because sometimes that kind of messes with your formation so much that the whole thing goes out of whack and you kind of lose the engagement because of it. This is turning into a bit of a problem. Sigismund should be fine. But I'm very concerned about her crew loss. We're at 40%. And that damn Bondi just will not sink. Engage the Gang Yao. 41% crew loss. I think the ship's going to surrender. Oh, this always happens. Um... When I'm trying to make... Oh, great. When I'm trying to make a ship extremely heavily armored, I tend to forget about the fact that the crew also needs to get very heavily armored. I.e., you just need more crew. Seeing as I did not do that, this particular battle, that means that that is the weak spot of all of these ships. Their crew lost. There she goes. Sigismund surrendered. Well, means I can fully micro this ship. And the Geng Yao just took a very serious beating from the Arpad. She is turning. Cease fire. I'm going to make my shot at the perfect moment. See, this ship is now going to have to try and swing their turrets all the way around. Although one of them does not even seem to want to do that anymore. Wait for the perfect opportunity. Don't squander your shot. Now. Perfect. Turn away. Because we're getting hosed down by HE again. And my crew is dropping like flies. Oh, we popped their turret off. It's helpful. <clears throat> but I also still have to sink a couple more ships. There's still a battle cruiser or two around there. Kill it. It's another compartment. 22% crew loss. Come on, I really want this thing gone. Get rid of it. We can see 3%. Flooding again. Oh, fuck's sake, dude. 1%. Sunk. Start killing the HE spammers. How much armor do they get? Oh, now you smoke up. Not a whole lot. Arpad should be capable of making those things go away pretty quick. But I would have wanted to, well, do that with HE, ideally. Come on, melt them. Thank you. That's helpful. You lost your conning tower? 
That's pretty rare. I've lost 31% of my crew. Wait, I also lost two of my turrets. What the fuck? How? The turrets are pretty much the most heavily armored part of the ship. What the hell? Okay, I must have missed that. It is rather important because it means I only have 50% of my firepower left. <laughs> Spread your fire. Um, I'm actually surprised the ship didn't lose a ton of ammo doing that little thing. Like losing half your guns. Could have been a lot worse. Switch fire. Not like that. I'm not too optimistic about my chances today. Because these CLs are still burning away my crew. Which also means that my damage control and my reload are getting increasingly worse. <clears throat> I'm a 35% crew loss. If I go to 45, I'm gone. How much can HE pen? Range? 5 kilometers. 0.8. It's not good enough. The armor piercing is way overkill. You do land your shots. Switch to HE. I'm going to see what that does. 36% crew loss. Yeah. Like, it does okay. 37% crew loss. Switch to the uh, Qing, Hao, Qing Huang Dao. <coughs> Missed. <clears throat> First salvo can miss. That's fine. Second salvo will hit, right? Because I don't really have time to play around. 37% crew lost. Come on. Blocked? Expecting at least a partial pen, but not a full block. 37.8. There's no escaping from these little shits either. They're so much faster than I am. Well, actually, no, they're not. Must have been the CAs. I'm only doing 21. 38% crew loss. Good. Have these BCs done anything useful? Ha! <laughs> no. <laughs> Good effort, though. Have you even fired? You have. Really. Okay. 38.5 crew loss. Yes, more flooding. Come on, I need to reduce the amount of guns that are shooting at me. <clears throat> oh, this other one's full health as well. Look at that damage control ability. Blocked. Okay. 39% crew loss. Yeah, this is pretty much done for. It's only a question of how long is it going to take. Come on. Really? You had the opportunity to hit one by going through the other? Make it work. Now. What? Wait, what? How did I bounce that? It's a light cruiser. The best armor it has is 8.7 inches on a turret. It's 6 kilometers out. I can pen 21 inches... <laughs> Right. Sorry, sometimes I forget what game I'm playing. There we go. That's more like it. I need to have a faster way to deal with these CLs. This is not good. The BCs are out of their HE ammo. That's rich. Kill this. I know I'm constantly leaving ships half alive. But most of them at this point are not really a risk anymore. This one is, because it still has plenty of shells and it has accuracy, which is something that some of these others can't really say. Oh boy. I'm going to start getting hit by 12 inches at this point. And that will probably hurt. Hmm. 
Maybe I went too heavy in the armor. I should have had better HE shells to knock out the light cruisers. Perhaps more speed at the expense of some armor. Because this way is not ideally how I would have wanted to go uh, with this battle. And maybe go for complete kills instead of these, let's say, maiming shots. Come on. Finish it. Really? No flooding? Fine. Come around. We're still doing 8 knots. I know I'm wasting my firepower at this point, but I don't want to give these BCs a better opportunity to kill me. Although, I'll just surrender, probably. Oh, come on. It's been a very long time since I've lost two ships due to surrendering. What? Or shit. There she goes. <laughs> painful. Pretty painful. Hmm. Killed one battleship. Extremely badly damaged another. Killed four heavies. Uh, maimed a couple of lights, but they don't seem to care. And the battle cruisers were, well, impotent, really. They didn't have any good firepower on them, so I just ignored them. Like what? 507 damage dealt with a battle cruiser, and a CL deals five. Sorry, deals ten times that. The CL actually did more damage than the battleship. Jesus. <laughs> All right. Okay, so that is um, zero points for me because I did not actually sink the enemy fleet, and that was the condition. If you do not sink the enemy fleet, no points. Saved too much, designed the ship just wrong, and I paid for it. The other guys are linked down below in the description if you want to check them out. Let me know how they did down below in the comments, and of course, check out their videos and comment on theirs. Thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you soon for more.